Hey guys, welcome back to Total Tactics FPL. It's Fran here and I'm back with wildcard draft ideas for you guys who are actually wildcarding this week. This is obviously a massive week to wildcard just because you actually will be able to capitalize on the next two double game weeks in 28 and 29. And then also probably set yourself up as best as possible for game week 30. And as we know with the sort of FA Cup fixture results that happened yesterday, we now have some safety in, in going for Spurs players and Arsenal players and, and making up a, a draft that sort of fills your team up with Arsenal and Spurs players I think makes a lot of sense uh, however you have to admit that the Chelsea double is something that is almost too good to pass up and and, and perhaps you, you might choose to address it in a less aggressive manner as you can see here with my wildcard draft I have three Chelsea players you could obviously opt to go for two Chelsea players and I'll also suggest a variation to kind of address game week 30 but I, I know that some people will be three hitting in 30 so I, this is the sort of team I would go with if I was three hitting in 30 as an example starting with the front line I, I do think this is a very template front line nowadays that people have been actually looking at blank game week 30 especially since Southampton will actually play within that match and Broya and Adams, both players are informed. They both looked good in the FA Cup. I'd say Adams, obviously, the one who's slightly more informed, but a little bit more expensive compared to most strikers. So uh, he is a little bit of a differential choice and a very good pick to go with the wild card now that we are very thin in terms of forward options. And that's exactly what Kane provides. And the beauty about Kane, even though he is quite expensive compared to most other players in the game, is that he kind of allows you to sidestep Sun, Sun in the midfield and then bank around a lot of these midfielders who have double game weeks as well between 28 and 29 that don't cost as much as Sun. And that's also kind of why I brought Kulishevsky into the lineup. Kulishevsky kind of gives you that coverage for Spurs when they have their double game week. And I really think it's a great match to own Spurs. We've seen the Spurs defense not exactly the best. I don't think there's too much upside there. But obviously, there's going to be a little bit of variance with maybe Regulon coming back into the lineup or even people who might go for a differential approach by opting for players like Doherty or Sessegnon and etc. For now, I would say it makes a lot of sense to go with Ramsey, especially since you're going to pair Kane into this team. And so Ramsey is that sort of budget option who is a little bit cheaper than Coutinho and effectively has posted slightly worse stats. But um, we've seen from just the actual production that he's very, very useful, especially in games where Aston Villa are allowed to play a bit more of a counter-attacking game because his directness in terms of carrying the ball and also running off at the shoulder of the final man versus his opponents is exceptional. I think Ramsey's finishing too is, is very direct and very great. So Ramsey's a great option to go for this game week when you have this double and then also to look at as an option in the blank game week 30. Havertz is the sort of differential pick in this draft. And I think every wildcard draft has the space for a sort of player like a Havertz where you can go for a slightly differential player. And the reason why I like Havertz at this price is he sort of gives you flexibility to push into players like Jota or Luis Diaz uh, from Liverpool and, and and that is a great way to play around this wild card in my opinion by simply moving from Havertz who should have a very strong double game week versus Burnley and Norwich straight into a Liverpool player to get you that three Liverpool lineup uh, for the next week obviously some people might prefer going for uh, Chelsea defenders and con consolidating that maybe going for Rudiger and James but as you can see with the defense I already have Mendy as a keeper suggested here Frazier is the person who has back-to-back -back double game weeks very very good on the bench or even playing just because he's at a very good cheap price and the one inflexibility here of course is is you now have uh, almost three or four players in the team who are at a very, very small price. And I think if, if you don't have the flexibility to upgrade them in the future, then that is a slight problem. Uh, you might prefer a little bit of draft flexibility by having another 4.5 player, but I don't really think it's necessary. I think Ramsey and Broya and, and Frazier are great options that actually allow you to play uh, a very sort of backline heavy team. And you can see that's that's what has uh, been the case here with Tierney being featured in this lineup. And, and Tierney is interesting, as I mentioned, because you still want to have at least one or two Arsenal players, um, with exception to Ramsdale, if, if you've gone for Ramsdale to actually play for blank game week 30 and, and then also capitalize on what should be an okay double versus Liverpool. I wouldn't be too optimistic about what Tierney can actually provide in 29. Um, I, I think he's been very consistent in the previous weeks and he's a great option to pick. But uh, you could also, as I say, sidestep that. And I'll discuss James and, and perhaps the benefits going for James. The only thing I like about this is I think this is a safer draft just because you don't know whether or not James can actually play the two games in, in, in game week 28 and, and therefore capitalizing on Mendy and Rudiger in, in what should be two clean sheets is going to be a great match. Or at least, you know, the minimum of one clean sheet, maybe an attacking return from Rudiger is, is still existent because Rudiger is one of the few centre-backs in the league who consistently posts 
um, kind of attacking returns. Roman Seiss, sorry, from from the center back position. Roman Seiss is someone who once again is is similar to Rieger, where he clearly is the focal point of set pieces for this Wolves team. He is one of the better scorers of the ball from the air that we've seen in the last few years from the central back, uh, central defense position, and. This season, he's sort of flown a little bit under the radar just because he hasn't actually hauled. But I think um, if, if you're the type of person who wanted to gamble on me, for example, in the previous week, then Sice is a great option, especially since he also plays in blank game week 30. Uh, Trent and Cancel are players I've actually kept in this wild card. And you might question why uh, someone would like to keep Cancel in the wild card. I just think that this is a player who's getting consistently seven to nine points a week. There's no real reason to actually take him out of your draft. He might be on your bench, your first option uh, this week or even in the, in the next, but I think Cancelo is, is almost too good to pass up on a draft. And for me, still a slightly better option than Reese James, just because you don't know whether Reese James can actually play an active role in, in the two games in the game week of 28. Dubravka and Mandy are my keepers. Dubravka is interesting because he is someone who, if you go for Mandy right now, you do have this, the, the space to go for Dubravka, who has a double in, in the subsequent week. Obviously, there is that match at first Chelsea where you don't expect Newcastle to do very well, but he could still get a lot of saves and stops. And what we've seen Newcastle do quite well recently from the defensive positions. As far as Mandy, you, of course, get to capitalize on the double. And I think the, there's much more security in going for Mandy right now than Reese James, even though Reese James has those attacking exploits. He has looked good, and I, I have actually watched him in some of the cup matches that he's played in lately, but I st would still say fitness is probably going to be an issue, and I think Tuchel will watch that because there's a very short overlay and overhang between the FA Cup fixture versus Luton, where Rhys James was playing, and then the subsequent match versus Burnley. The alternative option that you can go for is going to be this sort of switch up here between Ramsdale and James who are included within this draft and then Mendy and Tierney from the previous draft. What I like about this is it has a little bit more upside with James's attacking exploits and it is banking on him sort of playing the Burnley versus Norwich and uh, Norwich games and Chelsea having a great run towards the end of the season and then you being able to capitalize on that with having James in your team. It also gives you a little bit more, I guess, budget flexibility just because you actually have someone in the defensive position who can be maybe a little bit more easier to rotate uh, in your mind than let's say another keeper as far as Dubravka that could be also flexed into something like a, a Wolves keeper I, I must say that you could go for someone like Jose Sa on your draft and then actually move away from size maybe actually move into something like an Aston Villa fullback I think that could also be a very good differential approach too um, I would definitely keep Cancel in my draft as far as the midfield if, if there's anything I'd really change I mean you could arguably change the option of Havertz you could prefer going for Mount that could be a possibility too or if ZX seems to uh, have recovered which I don't think is the case ZX could be an option as well as far as Kulushevsky he's also going to be an option that people think about changing with someone like Saka who also has a double in the subsequent game week but I just think Spurs is double so much better and you get so much more coverage of players who have Sun uh, with Kulushevsky than just simply going for Saka. Alternatively, you could maybe um, tone it down a bit, maybe not go for triple Chelsea, uh, move Havertz for someone like Saka, and then use the flexibility there to opt for someone like Rafinha if you'd like. Uh, but I really like what Frazier can provide as, a, as someone who has back-to-back -back double game weeks and, and could probably feature in your starting lineups for both weeks ahead. So it's really up to you guys what you like for the wild card. I, I think these are sort of the template structures that I would suggest. And you can maybe play around with that and, and go for a slightly differential approach. But uh, just, just be aware of the beauty of the Chelsea double game week and also what Southampton double forwards will actually present for blank game week 30, just because it sets you up so well. It, it, I think your wildcard will also depend on what actually you plan to play with chip-wise. You, you could opt to go for um, a team that's a little bit more heavier with, with players who play in, in game week 29. If you plan on bench boosting in 29, that could be a very good option. For example, by extending a few more, let's say, Tottenham players, maybe additional, maybe even stretching yourself for a third player, maybe going for at least another Arsenal player, you could set yourself in, up in a situation where you capitalize on a lot of doubles and have very, very good a very good bench boost opportunity for 29 so that that's an option too not to mention that a lot of people will be either free hitting or not free hitting in 30. I, I will mention though in terms of three hitting on 30 that we just saw last week in a blank game week how quintessential having a good captaincy is players who actually went for sun uh, and kane went for a bit more of a differential captain last week actually benefited a lot and, and might have actually 
just with that sort of single decision have gotten themselves a green arrow in a week where maybe they didn't even have a full playing 11 as we saw the free hit wasn't super effective and you have to keep in mind that will probably similarly be the case in game week 30 so i think there's still a lot of upside looking at the back half of the season and going for those options uh just because you want to pay attention to players who will be playing uh in in further double game weeks and and capitalizing your chips on, on those sorts of weeks ahead but that's it for now um thank you guys so much for watching the video i'll see you guys shortly and hope you guys have a wonderful week ahead and um the next video will be the team selection so if you guys would like to kind of follow what i what i go for there then then uh stay tuned I, i'm not really planning on playing any chips uh, i will be holding my free hit for the back half of the season just in any so sort of game week where i feel uh it could be quite explosive just like it was in game week 26 that's it thank you guys so much